Hi there, I can see that uh, there's a question for 5D, question 4G, let's have a see what's 4G, 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 so question 4, and we're looking at G, okay, so with this question, 4G, the negatives are the similar to what we did back in integers, but let's have a look at G here, we've got negative 5X, all over 10yz squared. So I would break up this fraction, okay, because we can see that in the numerator, negative 5x basically means negative 5 multiplied to x, okay, that's in the numerator. But with fractions, we know that we can actually separate with multiplication, we can separate them out and I like to keep numbers with numbers, so I would then say, all right, well, this is a negative 5. I'm going to pair it with 10, so it'll be negative 5. 10 is on the bottom, because that's in the denominator. And then x, well, notice x is by itself. Um, and then notice that the others, the y, z squared, are in the denominator. So what I like to fill out is whatever's in the gaps there, I put in a one so that it separates all the letters and all the numbers. So that way I've got x by itself, y by itself, z squared by itself, and then I got numbers by themselves, okay? So by separating it like this, it's much easier to see what I can simplify. You see, in this fraction here, there's nothing to simplify, so I leave it as it is. Here, I can see there's nothing else to simplify as well, so I would leave it as it is. And then same thing with the last one. So it seems like there's not much to simplify in this fraction except for negative 5 on 10. So negative 5 over 10, what I'm looking for is to simplify by finding the highest common factor. So we first look at the number and we say, well, 5 and 10, what's the common factor here? And we know that it's 5. We can say, well, how many 5s fit in 5 and how many 5s fit into 10? In this case, we will now have negative 5 divided by 5, and we know that from um, our first uh, chapter on integers. Negative 5 divided by 5, so negative 5 divided by 5, remember, you divide it as it is, 5 divided by 5 is 1, but this is a negative number, and that's a positive number, so negative and positive is an overall negative. So, I've simplified the numerator to negative 1, and then 10 divided by 5 in the denominator is 2. Now this is all being multiplied to x over 1 times 1 over y times 1 over z squared. Now I know it looks intimidating, but remember with multiplications of fractions, you simply multiply top with top and then bottom with bottom. And even though it looks intense, really, I'm only asking what is negative 1, whoops, what is negative 1 multiplied to x multiplied to 1, multiplied to 1, which we know is just going to be negative x itself, isn't it? So negative x, because negative 1 times x is just negative x, and times 1, which is itself, and then 2 times 1 times y times z squared ends up being 2y z squared. There you go. So that is how you would do the fractions with negatives um, is what I would suggest you to do. Later on, you don't have to uh, expand it out the way I have. You can just focus on the numbers, but I like to break it apart to make it easier for students to see. So if I pick another one, let's say L. Let's say we do L, right? Let's do L together. So you got L negative 15 Z all over negative, oh wow, what's happened there? negative, maybe negative 20 z squared. So if I were to do this, same thing again, I would split the fraction apart. We know that negative 15 z just simply means negative 15 times z on the top, okay, in the numerator, over, and now I'm going to split the fraction up, we've got negative 20, so I'll keep the numbers with each other, so negative 20, times with, and notice the z squared, I'm going to keep it in the denominator here, z squared. 
Now, I can technically even break this z squared even further because this basically means z times z, doesn't it? So when I write it, I can write it again as negative 15 over negative 20 multiplied to z over z times z, okay? And we can see that since there are two of these on the bottom, I can actually split it up even further. And I know you don't have to. I, I like to do this so that students understand how it comes about. So I would split these two together, so z over z times, because it's still timesing, so notice that's a time symbol there. I have another z in the denominator, and well, what do I fill in the numerator? I put in a one. See what I'm doing there? So I'm just focusing, I'm breaking it apart, I'm breaking this z times z so that I get z times z separately. And the reason why you do that is you can see now if you were to simplify it, what number goes into 15 and 20? Well, I know five goes into 15 and 20. And here you can say 15 goes into five, five goes into 15 three times, five goes into 20 four times, but notice double negative is positive. Okay, so negative divided by negative is already a positive, so I don't need to, it's technically just a positive there. You don't need to write write that down, it's just three quarters, right? Multiplied two, now here hopefully you remember, what is z divided by z? A lot of students tend to forget this, but you remember three divided by three is one, and uh, sorry, having really runny nose right now. Four divided by four is also one, five divided by five is also one, well then z divided by z is also one as well. So by writing this down, it is one. Writing one as a fraction is one over one. And then don't forget you still have this one over z. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing there is I'm breaking it apart, and when you then combine them together, you multiply the fractions, top with top, bottom with bottom, okay? Then you end up with three times one times one is three, four times one times z is four z. Now I know that you can do it shorter, there's a shorter way of doing it, where if we went straight from the start, negative 15 z over negative 20 z squared, back then my teacher used to teach it as Find the numbers with the numbers, so 15 and 20, we know that 5 goes into 15 three times, 5 goes into 24 times, double negative is positive, so it cancels out, and then since you only have one z on the top, and you got two z's on the bottom, because that means z times z, you can cancel one of the z's out, and so you end up writing your answer as 3 over 4 z. See that? So your answer ends up being 3 over 4 z. And that's, it works, but uh, that's the problem. A lot of students make mistakes later on in senior levels. Say if you had 15 plus z over 20 z squared, a lot of students think it's okay to just go 15, cross it out, and then cross off the z, and that's not true. That, that, that will make the answer wrong. And a lot of students don't understand that the reason why my technique works is because I'm using multiplication of fractions. Okay, and it's okay to separate them the way I have if it's multiplication. You can't do it when it's addition. And that's that's where I'm still teaching students in the senior levels to make sure they don't make that mistake. Um, so that's why I often emphasize to 